Hello there, I'm Valentina Salari, a third year PhD student in neuroscience, and I'm here to tell you about my research project. As you may know, epilepsy is a condition in which the electrical activity in the brain gets out of control, in the sense that nerve cells, which normally send electrical signals in a precisely regulated way, become all active at once, as if in an electrical storm, with very significant clinical consequences. To get an idea, when electrical brain activity is recorded with an EEG, this is what it normally looks like, and this is what an epileptic seizure looks like. The type of epilepsy I am interested in affects children of 4-5 years of age and is rather unique in that seizures mostly occur during sleep. The condition is relatively uncommon but probably underestimated as parents and physicians start noticing worrisome signs of cognitive and behavioral disorders while the child appears to sleep normally. Seizures are usually refractory to pharmacological treatments, but tend to spontaneously disappear around puberty. However, brain dysfunction over an extended developmental period can have severe long-term consequences, resulting in behavioral cognitive and neurological deficits in adulthood. The fact that the abnormal electrical activity is concentrating during sleep, indeed during the deeper stage of sleep, is extremely interesting because of the likely role of sleep in processing and consolidating the time experiences. At the cellular level, the mechanism involved is known as synaptic plasticity. Synapses are the points of contact between neurons, where information is passed from one cell to the next, which is how circuits are formed. But synapses are not static. Every time we experience something new, worth remembering, or we learn a new skill, Neurological connectivity adjusts by changing the number and strength of the synapses in the involved circuits. This, in a nutshell, is synaptic plasticity, and sleep seems to play a key role in its fine-tuning. Given all this, is it possible that neurological syndrome is due to a disruption in synaptic plasticity, in turn caused by altered brain activity during sleep? To test this hypothesis, we studied two mouse strains, one suffering from epileptic discharge, similar to those observed in human patients, and the other a normal control. First, we recorded the animal CEG activity, and the results are shown here. I chose red to represent the JAX group, the epileptic mice, and green for the OLA group, the normal controls. As you can see, epileptic discharges were present in all JAX mice, but in none of the controls. We then train animals in a simple motor task, where, with extended practice, mice learn to maintain balance on a suspended cylinder, which rotates at increased speeds. This exercise has been shown to induce a significant amount of synaptic plasticity in the parts of the brain responsible for controlling motor activity. Results show that Ola and Jax mice perform similarly on the first day. However, motor performance is improved significantly between day 1 and day 2 in Ola but not in Jax group, which suggests a learning deficit in the epileptic mice. To establish a possible correlation between the behavior and synaptic plasticity, we are currently examining the animal's brain with the confocal microscope a powerful instrument that allows us to visualize minute details from tissue samples. As you can see here, with a method called immunohistochemistry, we can label both sides of each synapse, the transmitting end, the presynaptic contact, here in red, and the receiving end, the postsynaptic, here in green. And we do this for both excitatory and inhibitory synapses. The images are then analyzed with dedicated software that counts synapses, each identified by a green spot in close opposition with a red spot. We aim to assess if the number and the distribution of synapses in the motor cortex of epileptic mice, those that do not improve after training, is significantly different from the normal controls. The successful completion of the study will result in a better understanding of what happens in the brains affected by seizures during sleep. Specifically, the importance of our study is twofold. 
In terms of basic science, it could help understand the role of brain activity during sleep in learning and memory. From the perspective of applied science, it could help identify future diagnostic and therapeutic options.